response of a common source amplifier from very low frequency to very high frequency, right? This is very long. You can read it yourself. I'm going to go through step by step with you. The first step is we start at the low frequency. It's more for biasing. So at this stage, I don't care about the parasitics. I don't draw it. But what type of amplifier is this? Common source with degeneration. But what do I say here? Common source, right? So either you are wrong or either I'm wrong, right? Or either you have a def different definition from me. And this time is the definition. Not the definition about common source and common source with de degeneration. It's the definition about where you want to call it the amplifier you want to use. Now, I will show you later. Now, so it's indeed a common source with degeneration at the beginning, right? So let's look at the game. It's good that you recognize this common source with degeneration. Why? Because I want to find the gain of this whole circuit. Why do I add R1, R2 if I want to have a common source with degeneration? Yeah? For biasing. I, I'm happy that you can say it's for biasing because I need to bias it with a DC voltage. Then I couple with a large capacitor with my small signal to it, right? And now I can tell you why I say this is not common source with degeneration because this is also for biasing. But then you say, yeah, you bias it, but still you have the degeneration resistor. Isn't that is common source with degeneration? Then I'm going to show you that later, this CB is going to make this disappear at the frequency I want. So you are right, this is common source with degeneration, but in my mind, I try to design a common source amplifier. So how is the gain? The gain is very complicated. You need to solve KCL and KVL, but by inspection with our cheat sheet, we already know how to do it. We can do it stage by stage. Gain definitely is equal to V out divided by V in. But earlier we learned a skill, how to deal with this complex situation. Because I say, if I know what is, I already know what is the gain from X to V out, because I recognize this is a common source with degeneration. So I decided to break it into two parts. V out divided by Vx and Vx divided by V in, right? V out divided by Vx is easy because you just told me it's common source with degeneration, right? So do you remember the equation? Gm Rd divided by 1 plus Gm what? Very good. Basically, divided by this whole thing, Rs dash, yeah, which is just equals to Rs parallel 1 over Scb. And this is Rs dash, right? Just modular, right? You check your cheat sheet. I don't have this equation, but I have an equation with a Rs dash. But we're working in frequency domain. Even your capacitor, I just make it as an impedance. So impedance is Rs parallel this guy. So I'm done with this part. How about V in? Vx divided by V in. A little bit difficult to see, but I hope you will have this uh, experience. All right, again. Yes, say again. It's a filter. It's a filter. Uh, we are trying to find out the right name. Almost like filter, but usually what do we call this? It's a high bus filter, you can say that, but at this moment, uh, what do we call this? I, I just draw the circuit. Are you agree with what I'm drawing? Because VDD is grounded, remember we're talking about AC analysis, right? Yeah, voltage, voltage divider. It's a high pass filter, you're right, but it's a voltage divider, right? So Vx divided by V is nothing but just R1 parallel R2 divided by 1 plus R1 parallel R2. No. Uh, yeah, 1 become SC1, CI. Is this okay? Yeah? Voltage divider. Let me check my cheat sheet. 
to make this thing. Yeah, so I'm wrong. One over at seed, right? <laughs> See, I can make mistake. You can also make mistake. So you better be Therefore, careful. I will give you another final and give everyone a, but not okay. counter to the way. <laughs> okay, so be very careful, okay? Really, yeah. Uh, so that's it. So we are done. The rest is just math, right? So here I read, just write it again, right, from uh, a nicer form. And that is, here I divided by GM. That's why you have RD on top and I make a mistake also. What did I forgot? Negative, right? Uh, this is a big mistake actually, right? Uh, so I divided by GM negative RD, right? And that's why we have this, exactly like what we did before. Now, you can find the pole, you can find the zero, but because of time, I don't want to do that. I just give you the pole and zero, okay? One by one, because I'm a little bit too slow. First of all, this one, the first term, this guy, it has one zero. Do you see that? Equals to zero, right? And then it has one pole, which is one over CI R1 parallel R2. Okay. This one, you need to go through some math, a little bit uh, complicated, but it has one zero. Let me just copy. RSCD. Okay, and only one pole. You can try to go over. Only one pole. You, you try to do it yourself this time. I'm slow. Um, it's equals to negative 1 plus gm rs divided by rscd. Okay. Which one is larger? Z Z2 or P2, based on this expression? P2, because I have 1 plus GM RS, you have the same denominator, right? So you can see that P2 is larger than Z2, right? Now here I'm going to make C1, CI really large, because this is just the coupling capacitor, right? I really want it to be very small, but no matter how small it is, it is larger than Z1 because Z1 is zero, right? So how are you going to draw the body plot? This is log frequency. And again, this is 20 log A. Yeah? So I have a zero, which is infinity, right? So it's going up. So it's going up somewhere right like here. And then it hits my first pole, PI, right? And this is where, this is no longer important. My gain becomes one due to the first stage because when my frequency is high enough, this is shorter, right? Once I reach here, this is so high, this term becomes, because this is something divided by something plus one, right? When the frequency is large, this term becomes one, and that is your purpose. So for low frequency, you actually have attenuation, but once you reach high frequency, it just fret, okay? So this is P1, and then what happened? It's going to hit another pole called C2, uh, another zero, C2, and then it hit another pole, P2, which is here. Now, do I discuss now or later? Okay, I'll discuss later. So this is the, yeah. Yes, P1, I'm sorry, P1. Instead of PI. Right? And just for those who did not come to the class or did not watch the video, I label here at infinity, it is Z1, negative infinity, right? Is this okay? Think about that. Any questions?
Okay. So what I care now is this part, because this is where I want to operate. Okay, so I need to design it. For example, if it is an audio amplifier, I need to make sure that this one is maybe 10 hertz or 1 hertz, right? I don't care about 0 0.1 hertz, 0 0.01 hertz, right? And maybe if it's an audio amplifier for some special animal that you're trying to study, I don't know, like dolphin, I don't know, maybe they have a actually higher lower frequency, higher minimum frequency, you just change it accordingly, right? But why is that? Just look at this. When the um, omega is much, much larger than P1, this one will almost equal to 1. When the omega is much, much larger than P2, okay, you will find that this one is equal to negative R. DGM. Look at this one, you can see it. When the frequency is much, much larger, very large, when this is very large, I can ignore this guy, right? When SCB is very large, this is zero, right? Zero parallel RS is zero. So zero plus one over GM is one over GM. This becomes negative GM RD. And that's why this become a common source amplifier. And it makes sense. At high frequency, maybe I just call it mid-band, not high frequency yet. CI, shorter, because they are large. CB, shorter, right? So as a result, this guy, RS, CB becomes something connected to ground directly. This is shorter, so this has no effect. And that's why I say that we are both right. This is a common source with degeneration. Indeed, you use common source with degeneration equation to derive it. But this is a common source amplifier because I want to amplify it at the frequency where CB becomes shorter. So I am also correct, okay? Uh, yeah, because of time, maybe I'll just stop here, right? I skipped some math, but you, I think you can do it if you want, okay? Uh, any questions? So the next step is to add a high frequency capacitor, but I, we won't do it after, uh, until after midterm, okay? Uh, on Wednesday, I will talk about the power stage, which you need for your lab. Uh, and I will also include in the midterm. So free question already. Yeah. 